Hello and welcome to ATP Report. I'm Barry Nussbaum. Back with us today is our very special guest and friend of both myself and uh, Annie here at ATP, Tom Del Vaccaro. For those of you that don't know, Tom has a very long and impressive career in and around politics. Uh, he's an author. He's the head of, former head of the California Republican Party, and he is the guy that is in charge of the recall of Governor Gavin Newsom. Tom, thanks for coming back. Great to be on. I'm uh, chairman of rescuecalifornia.org and californiarevival.com. Those are my two packs. And we've raised $3.2 million, or actually $3.3 .3 million now, uh, towards this and got about six or 700,000 signatures working with Recall Gavin 2020 as well. And we're going to have a recall election this fall. Well, let's talk about it because you're the guy, which is why I'm so happy to have you on today. So let's start with this. Tell us your background in California state politics. Um, you and I both know you've got some very up close and personal Kamala Harris background <laughs> in your background. Uh, give us a quick biography. Well, I got started in the early 2000s, believe it or not, when uh, you had Bill Simon running against Gray Davis. And then the next year, Gray Davis was recalled, and I played a small role in that, got involved in state party politics, eventually became the vice chairman and then chairman of it. Since then, I've been a, a television and uh, radio commentator, but in 2016, I ran against the future vice president for U.S. Senate, actually beat her in the statewide poll uh, after poll from the first debate. In the second debate, for some reason, they didn't do a poll afterwards. Uh, but in any case, uh, since then, again, I returned to television and radio. I, I write for Fox, Newsmax, Epic Times, and I uh, appear on Newsmax, OAN, and Fox. And then I took up this cause last, uh, all the way last June now, can't believe it's been nearly a year. And we are proud of the fact that we got 2.2 million sing signatures at Rescue California working with Recall Gavin 2020. Okay, you're totally qualified for the next question. <laughs> what is the latest on the recall? Everybody is talking about it. Yeah, so we got those 2.2 million signatures. They, uh, those signatures still reside in the registrar's office. The procedure is you turn them into the 58 county registrars. They verify them, meaning they look at the signatures and the addresses, believe it or not. They don't do that as nearly as close as we would like it for the election, for elections, but for the recall, they're looking at them. Uh, they have until April 29th for final verification. We need 1.495 million verified signatures because we got 600,000 over that amount. We are more than confident that it will qualify. Then after April 29th, it goes to the Secretary of State. Uh, there's a 30 day period where you can actually withdraw your signatures. We don't expect that to, to have any significant impact. And then uh, somewhere in the June time frame, uh, if there's no legal challenges, and that's a big if, uh, we expect them to declare that there's going to be an election this fall. So I read um, about a month ago, Tom, they had published how many signatures had been verified. Is there, has there been an update since then? Well, there's a monthly update, and we expect a, an update uh, in, the, in the week of April 14th or thereabouts, and that will still only be partial. They have until April 29th for a final. Got it. So if you can make it succinct, tell our viewers what the main reasons are that you and 2.2 million of your closest friends want to recall the governor of California. Well, keep in mind uh, that uh, about 36% uh, of the signatures are non-Republican, which is an amazingly high number. In Los Angeles, more Democrats than Republicans signed it. In San Mateo, more independents and Democrats than Democrats than Republicans. But this is about government accountability. 
you know, I, I didn't support the first attempts at the recall of Newsom because when you win elections, you have a right to make policy choices. But once COVID came around, his incompetence, which cost people lives when it came to the wildfires and electrical crisis, and his bad policies with regard to, to water, then you get to COVID. And what you are experienced there is not only really bad policy that is hurting people, putting them out of business, endangering them, but also unconstitutional behavior. He changed unilaterally over 400 laws. And there's you know multiple levels of arguments why he what, shouldn't have been allowed to do that all by himself. And so once it crossed over into unconstitutionality, and even if the Supreme Court of California doesn't have the backbone to stand up, then I thought it was appropriate for the recall, and that's what we have been doing ever since. So it seems to me, if there was a tipping point, um, from my perspective, it seems to be COVID. Um, I, I get an avalanche of communications from friends across the state of California where, you know, I, it's been my home for 40 something years. And the degree of suppression of the economic livelihood and the futures of Californians has just been devastating, devastating. You know, the schools, the businesses, trade, travel, and so on. And yet, for Gavin Newsom, it's great when you have 10,000, 50,000 rioters marching down the street, arm in arm, breathing, spitting, singing, all on each other and burning down billions of dollars in real estate. But God forbid, 30 people want to go to a church on Easter send in the sheriffs with battle guard dress on to escort them to the paddy wagon. I, I, I gotta feel like that's been the thing that's made people the angriest is his handling of these double standards for COVID. Do you agree? Yeah, I think COVID has been a bonanza for double standards on the left, uh, whether it's Gavin Newsom sending his kids to a private school when, when other students couldn't go, uh, the riots that you talk about, where Gavin Newsom says, I understand your anger, uh, and, and then allows them to do these sort of things. But as you point out, uh, you can't go to church. Look, it's a double standard to let people stand in line at Home Depot. And I have nothing against Home Depot. I'm a big fan. I shop there. But why should they uh, allow to have so many people in a big box where churches, which are big boxes, are not? And people are fed up with that. Why should Target be able to sell ch children's clothes with social distancing, but a mom and pop store couldn't? It just goes on and on and on. It, it, it was stunningly irrational. I mean, even a child can figure out that, okay, if you have a small store and you could social distance easier, frankly, because it's easier to see who's right in your business, why can the small store, why is the small store shut down to sell children's clothes, but Target's not? And they refuse to adjust. And, and you can just keep going and going. One of the tipping points beyond his hypocrisy of going to the French laundry while we were to stay at home was the fact uh, that, that he put large LA in the same region as San Luis Obispo, a rural county, and applied some of the same rules. Stuff like this made no sense, and that's what infuriated people. And it really got exposed with Florida, which has been open since last July to one degree or another, and their COVID rates are better than California. And you can't say that it's not a, a populated state. It's getting overpopulated by some people's, uh, uh, or at least Floridians are concerned, too many people are flocking there. And keep in mind the average age in Florida is really high. And so how did they survive this open or semi-open in California completely shut down? So uh, it's just been a, a double standard uh, bonanza on the left this last year. Yeah, I wanted to ask you about the story you just alluded to, the French laundry thing. I, I, I read that it's the most expensive restaurant in California. West of Manhattan. It, oh, it is. So that is true. And yeah, it's staggering. It, and to have a party there in a private dining room indoors 
no social distancing, no masks, singing, hugging, drinking wine, celebrating, breathing on each other where everybody else is outside. And then you get caught and then you lie about it. And then you deny certain things about it until the pictures come out. And then the pictures okay. come out. And then you said, well, it wasn't your party. And it turns out it was your party. I mean, it wasn't just that he did it, but he flagrantly broke a half a dozen of his own rules and then lied about it until each progressive domino fell. To, so at the end, he just looked like a big fat liar. Is, is that like the tipping point in this whole recall thing? Well, think about it. People will undertake shared sacrifice if their leaders are in the same position. But once you lie or take special privileges, you lose credibility, especially in this information age. What, pe what certain people in the media at large or public figures think they can get away with blows me away. So it was a point where it was, okay, end of story. We're not believing this guy anymore. He's a hypocrite. And that's the kind of stuff you can't rebound from. You can make a policy choice that's wrong and then pivot. But once you lose personal credibility and, and lose popularity, you remember Bill Clinton did things that a lot of us were very much disturbed by. But generally, he was liked. And so he, he recovered. But Gavin Newsom isn't liked, and his, his policies for sure are hurting people. But given now that they think him a liar and an elitist, that's really hard to recover from. Well, you know, on that vein, I, I look at a guy like Gavin Newsom from the outside, and he just literally can't get out of his own way. And then to respond to the whole recall movement 2.2 million plus californians signed on as you said a a very significant number of non-republicans have signed on and as we all know california is a heavy democrat registered state but to now have his his defense which has been echoed by a number of prominent national politicians that this is all about racism and white supremacy and if you're not a racist, and if you're not a white supremacist, you should vote no on the recall. Is that really going to have any traction with California when the vote comes up? Well, I think for some on the left, as you know, we've talked before, it, it is a dog whistle to which they respond. His problem is, is that third of the Democrats want him gone. And if you sign something saying, I want you to be recalled, and you're a Democrat, and then they blame it on, he essentially is insulting them, saying they don't even have their own thought process. I think he actually hardens opposition against them. So it's a very narrow play. He wants to push out the Democrat vote and hope the rest don't uh, will overlook it. We'll have to see. I, I think he's got to be recalled. Well, I can say this from having known you for a number of years, you are not a white supremacist. You are not a racist. Um, I don't know about the rest of the people signing, but everyone that calls me and says they signed, I would put in the same boat as you. Just even even Chuck, even Chuck Todd said, well, 2.1 million people, they signed. You're not saying all of them are that. And Gavin Newsom had nothing to say. By the way, Gavin Newsom's not that bright. He can, like Kamala Harris, he has one comeback that somebody fed him, but he's not able to to from at that point, go on and, and, and answer responsibly the rest of the questions. So he always gets caught up in his own, uh, the dead ends that he, he makes for himself. Well, the problem is the talking points have worn out and nobody's believing them. We'll see what he comes up with in the fall when he's got a campaign to keep his job. Absolutely. And, and now that we have candidates out there giving alternatives to the policies of the Democrats, he has to defend himself and he's not good at that either. Thanks a lot for coming on today, Tom. Sure appreciate your wisdom and insight as always. Uh, and all of you out there in ATP land that haven't signed up yet, please subscribe to our text message alert system. It's absolutely free. All you have to do is text the word truth 
and address it in the two box to the number 88202, push send. You'll be signed up. You'll get all of Tom Del Bocaro and all of our other contributors on your cell phone, absolutely free. For Tom Del Bocaro, I'm Barry Nussbaum. Thanks for coming on with us on ATP Report.